Hey guys, David the First Place Auto Parts. And recently I've been out talking to a lot of cars. You can find all those interviews on the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. But today what we're going to do is we're going to answer, a, we get a bunch of questions on this. And it has to do with master cylinders, especially when it comes to either a full wheel disc brake conversion kit or maybe you're just doing a rear disc brake conversion kit. Now, look, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a heads up. When you buy these kits as complete kits, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff because it's all sized to work appropriately and work together. When you buy a, a kit from First Place Auto Parts, your master cylinder is designed to work with your calipers, which is designed to work with your rotors. Guys, all you gotta do is bolt them on and bleed them and they're ready to go. But let's say you're one of those guys who's trying to mix and match stuff, or maybe you just like to better understand what the difference with master cylinders are. Look, there's bore sizes, there's also different types of chambers, and if you have manual or you have power brakes, they're different as well. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shed a little bit of light on master cylinders, a little bit of the technology, and some of the things you may not know. So stay tuned, today we're talking master cylinders, and hopefully by the end of this video, you're gonna have a better understanding of how they work and what you need for your vehicle. Now, understanding what master cylinder is right for your application, it's not difficult once you understand the three principles. And the first one is, is that how much capacity does it have to hold fluid? One you're gonna find out with a lot of your master cylinders is that if you have a four wheel drum brake vehicle, is your chambers in your master cylinder will be of equal size. And that's just fine because you have wheel cylinders at each wheel and they don't require a lot of fluid. Look, your drum brake master cylinder is gonna have a smaller bore diameter because it doesn't require the amount of fluid that a disc brake does. A disc brake, however, let's say we had a front disc brake car with rear drums, which is what the master cylinder I have here, you'll see that the front chamber is larger than the rear. The front chamber is going to service the front disc brakes, the rear chamber will service the rear drum brakes. And the reason is that the pistons inside of the actual calipers themselves require more volume of fluid. Look, when these brake pads wear inside this caliper, the piston that's in the back side of this caliper moves out to compensate for that wear. It takes more fluid. You have to have that reservoir, that capacity inside this master cylinder to supply that. So what you get when you get a four wheel disc brake or a front disc brake conversion kit, if you're going from drums up front, is you're gonna get a need, or need a master cylinder that has a larger front reservoir. As long as your rear drum brakes stay the same, you'll have a smaller reservoir in the back. Now, four wheel drum brakes, they're gonna have reservoirs that are equal size. They're gonna be of equal size because they're gonna be wheel cylinders at all four corners. They don't need a whole lot of volume. They don't move a lot. Those, dis, those actual brake shoes themselves don't move a ton when you apply the brake pedal, but it's not the same with a disc brake kit. Now, when you go to four wheel disc brake conversion kits, your need for the capacity grows even more because now you've got to satisfy that brake pad wear and that piston on the rear calipers as well. What you're going to get into is a master cylinder that has larger chambers front and rear to be able to substantiate or to provide that flow. Let's say that you did a four wheel disc brake conversion kit and you didn't change your master cylinder and you were just replacing drum brakes in the rear. What you would have is the front brakes would still work okay, but those rear calipers would not get enough flow and what you would get towards the end of your pedal is a spongy pedal. So that's why you've got to make sure that you get the right size and the right capacity master cylinder. Also, what you're going to get with four wheel disc brake conversion kits is you're going to get a master cylinder that has a larger bore diameter. And the bore diameter has to do with this part down in this area of the master cylinder where the O-rings, so when you push on the pedal and it pushes on the piston, it basically bypasses or opens up certain passageways and creates the pressure and the flow. So your master cylinder for your four wheel disc brake conversion kit is much different than a four wheel drum kit, and it's even different than a front disc rear drum kit. So again, when it comes time to buying your actual disc brake conversion kit, look guys, I've done it myself where I've mixed and matched parts, and it was a little bit of trial and effort or error trying to get the right master cylinder. Now, it's so much easier because you can buy a kit that is designed to work together. And that's what we sell at First Place Auto Parts. When you buy these kits, you're gonna get the right master cylinder for the right application on your vehicle. 
And for you guys that already have front disc brakes but want to just convert to a rear disc brake conversion kit to get rid of those old drums, and look, I highly suggest you do. The amount of control and modulation you have with disc is so much better than it was with drums. I'll tell you, I can tell you from experience when I did it on my 56 Chevrolet, just the modulation of the brakes by replacing those drums, those things really, they have a lot of brake swept area, but they're very um, not linear when they work in action because those brake shoes, when you apply them, they spread out and what happens is the the brake shoe itself touches that brake drum at different points in the arc. When you get into a rotor, what that piston is doing inside that caliper is it's squeezing that actual rotor when it's turning in a linear kind of fashion. So the more you push down, the more clamping pressure you get. You just don't get that same effect with a drum brake. So I really love the rear disc brake conversion kits. But did you know that a rear drum typically needs about four to 500 PSI of brake line pressure where a disc requires eight to 900 PSI. So when you're doing your conversion to your disc brake conversion kit, make sure that you get one with a new master cylinder because you're not only gonna need more fluid, but you're gonna need more capacity as well and more and actually more pressure. So get the right master cylinder for the right job. And look guys, you can't, the braking is a safety thing. You can't short, short change this stuff. And that's why I really recommend buying them as kits. Again, I've done it the old school way, trying to mix and match stuff. It took me forever. Like it cost me a ton more money than it would have just buying a kit. Now it was many years ago before kits were available, but the reality is this stuff is so nice. You get it in such nice you know, condition. You can choose if you want powder coated calipers or not in that type of reservoir, whether it's polished or it's just traditional cast iron. But there's so many options when it comes to it. It's just, it's a no brainer when it comes time. Like I said, if you're doing a four wheel disc brake conversion kit, absolutely you need a master cylinder. If you're ruining a rear disc brake conversion kit, you need a master cylinder. Either way, the master cylinder is the brains of the operation. It's what's gonna provide the lifeblood, if you will, the brake fluid, not only in a proper volume, but also in a proper pressure. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. And until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.